It's about what happens now. The displacement process, where do we go from here, what our role in that will be, and how we're going to assist you. Um, we'll do our best to answer all of your questions. If there's a question that we do not know the answer to, we'll write it down. I will go back, find the answer, and email it back so you, you'll get um, the appropriate response to all of your questions. I think the best way to, I don't want to just stand up here and talk, I think the best use of time is um, for us to respond to all the millions of questions that I'm sure are floating around in your head right now. So I'll, I'll respond to hands, and hopefully that will work. We'll try to keep some order, and uh, we'll take it from there. My first name is Debbie, and my last name is I-G-N-A-G-N-I. And I'm the Assistant Chief Human Resources Officer. Um, and I don't know, you all know Tim Faulkner, F-A-U-L-K-N-E-R. And he's the personnel specialist for Local District 6. Okay. Sure. And let's have the questions be as loud as possible, too, so everybody can hear the questions. Okay, this is Bernie's response. Where do we report? This is the question that we've been asking. Um, several times every time we get an opportunity. And you can directly answer it here. You say the teachers who found other schools go to their school, that's obvious. Right. But if someone who has not found another school, um, where do they report? If you if you have not found another school assignment yet, um, you will you will be assigned to a district assigned to a pool location By when? for the summer. So you will stay home, you will have summer vacation, you will continue to interview, and um, if you have not secured an assignment sometime in mid-August, we will assign you to a school location as a pool teacher. And on the first day of Either A track or traditional calendar, whatever you're assigned to, you would report to that school. And you will receive um, an assignment letter in the mail, U.S. mail, with the information about the school and the date and the time to report. Is this a registered letter? Uh, no, it will go regular U.S. mail. And when will it come out again? I'm sorry? When? When will it come out? Um, August? It will come out mid-August if you have, we want to give you an, enough time to interview during the summer to find a place where you want to be, and then um, and then we will come mid-August, those individuals who have not yet secured assignment, we will assign to a pool location and we will notify you of that location. Yes. Uh, our union contract says that we have 10 days right of refusal on the assignment. Um, are you guys sticking to that? Uh, That's going to be one of those questions I have to take back to staff relations. Yeah, we can refuse an assignment. We have 10 days to get back to them. So will we know 10 days before the beginning of the school year what our, our pool assignment will be? Uh, with all good intentions, yes. Can I absolutely guarantee it? No. We'll do everything we can to get that out uh, at least two weeks before school starts. Are, are you the person that knows the pool? No, my staff does, in conjunction with local district staffs. Okay, yes. My question has to do with the priority list. I have basically two questions relating to that. First of all, um, I get hearing that our names are still not on a priority list anywhere, even though some of us opted not to reapply. So I'm wondering, those of us who did not reapply, that was three weeks ago, why aren't our names on the priority list? And as a follow-up to that, when we're assigned to a pool, will those assignments reflect in any way um, geographically what's going to be feasible or unfeasible for, I mean, obviously, somebody in the valley is not going to be driving down to San Pedro very easily. How will that be determined which you know, which list are you going to be on? Are we only going to be on the priority list for District 6, since this is where uh, we're being released from? Or will we also have our names on priority lists 
in terms of being placed in other local districts. Okay. Let's take the first part of the question was the priority list and um, why haven't some of your names been placed on it. We received a list yesterday of, of everyone who submitted applications, didn't submit applications, interviewed and was, sele was selected, interview interviewed and were not selected. So based on that, all of you who did not reapply to stay at Huntington Park and those of you who went through the interview process but weren't selected to stay have now been placed on the priority placement list. It is a district-wide placement list. One list for the whole district. That means you're free to interview at schools in any local district. Um, as far as when it comes time to place people in a pool, that was the second part of your question, geographic, well, right? Oh, but the second part sense? also was during the summer now, as we go to interview, if we're on a priority list, what kind of uh, selection benefit does that give us? I mean, in terms of interviewing with the principal who may feel inclined to hire somebody with less seniority who is not on a priority list. Excellent question. We're not doing a whole lot of hiring from outside the district because we have this massive priority placement list because of all of the district, the, the um, displacements that are happening throughout the district. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So uh, we are going to continue having um, placement fairs at different locations throughout the district. At the placement fairs, we bring together schools that have vacancies and those individuals who are on the priority placement list and, you, and uh, we set up a, um, a time and place where you can have multiple interviews on the same day with several different schools. Uh, we will continue having those placement fairs uh, for the next couple of weeks. Also then through the summer, uh, principals will still be interviewing and we will keep in touch with you via email. Vacancies are always posted on the teachinla.com website. You're free to apply to any vacancy that appears on that website for which you are credentialed. The next part of the question was, um, when it comes time to placing individuals in a, in a, in a pool location, do we take geographic um, matters into consideration? We try whenever possible. We do it by zip code. We certainly don't want people spending three hours on the freeway getting from San Pedro to Woodland Hills. Is it always possible to put somebody back in the same local district or within five miles? No, but we do our best at trying to place people within a reasonable distance from their home. We'll go here and then there. Yeah, I've got a question about the placement of uh, fairs that's going to be happening. The, the, the time? Can you, can you the, give him the microphone? Because I can't hear his question. I'm tethered. I don't know if I go that far. Okay. Yeah, I've noticed these, these placement fairs seem to be things like 1.30 to 4.30. We don't even get out of here until like 3.15, and they get to some place way far away. It's kind of a, uh, are some of these placement fairs going to be in the weekend or maybe later in the evening? Or in a, how do we find out about where, you know, where, when they're going to be? Okay. Uh, good question. The placement fairs have all gone till at least 6 or 6.30. In fact, last night we had one, we were there till about 7. Um, they will always be held uh, in, in afternoon, late afternoon. We're looking at the next one to be next Tuesday. Am I correct, Tim? Next, tu next Tuesday, it's going to be held at Obama Middle School, the local district 7. And Tim will be emailing you the information about that fair, how you can register, the hours, um, directions. What about tomorrow? Wait a minute, let's go over here first, and then we'll come back.
But, but yesterday, I wasn't on the list. I just received the lists yesterday, so I, it takes a bit of time for me to enter them. It's a manual process. The, someone asked about the fair that's scheduled tomorrow. That's actually been canceled, and and we are rescheduling it for next Tuesday. Can, can we check that list? The, the list that says that can we call, like go physically look at the list to make sure we're on it, or is there a way you can email us the list so that we know we're, we've been placed on the list? If you have any question about whether you're on the priority placement list, email Tim, you know, so and he will verify that you are on the list. But we've taken the list that was provided to us by the local district. And we've taken all those names and added them to the priority placement list by subject. So we also have your credential subject or subjects on there. As I, I will um, respond to you by email as I enter your name. So it's going to be over the next couple of days while I work on it, but I'll send each of you an email as I finish it so you know that it's been put on there. Okay. And the reason why we canceled um, Thursdays is we didn't have a really good response for, for, from schools, so we didn't want 200 teachers showing up and only having two or three schools there to do interviews. So that's why we've rescheduled for until um, next Tuesday. Let's go on this side. I have a question about, um, about principal and the, perhaps their attitudes about hiring displaced teachers. I called the school just this morning, and I asked the principal for his email address, and he said, well, just go on the school site. You'll find it on our school site. It was clear to me that he was not interested in providing me with his email address so I could email him his, his, my resume. And he sent me through to his website where there was no email of his, no place where I could send the resume to him. So, you know, you're saying that that uh, we're not hiring much from outside the district, but what he told me this morning was that we've already got a round of interviews set, already in place, we're not accepting any more, and then and most likely we'll have, have hired somebody within this week, or, you know, within this time, but if you, if you put your name in, we'll put you on the next round. What I, what I gathered from that, and I don't think it was too ambiguous what he was saying, is that don't bother, you're displaced, we've got people that are on this list, and you're at the back of the line. That, that's the impression I got. Now, is there anything from your office or from, you know, from, the, from the upstairs side of things saying what he's doing is wrong, and what he's doing is illegal, and we need to correct that. Because it appears to me that that there is some attitude among the principals yes. of we're going to work around this process and circumvent the whole displaced teacher situation. What I can say is, is all of the local district superintendents were informed last Thursday that principals must select, must interview from the priority placement list, and that the priority placement list is um, one list for the whole district, so we can't just say, well, I'm only going to interview people from local district two because I, I'm a principal in local district two. What I will do, though, because that may be an isolated incident, no, is no, take... Absolutely not. Okay. Then what I, what I have to do, then, is to ask you to give me the names of the schools and the principals if you want me to address it. I don't have any other way of addressing it. Principals don't report to me. They don't, we don't have line staff to HR for the principals, so the only way we can address it is with local district superintendents to make another announcement to remind them that hiring and interviewing is from the priority placement list. If there is a specific problem, then we'll have to deal with it on, on an individual basis. But the principals who have been attending the placement fairs have been interviewing those displaced teachers who have attended the fairs as well. Are we on the displaced list by seniority dates? Microphone? The question was, are you on the placement list, the priority placement list by seniority dates? No. The priority placement list is date free. It has names and credential area. Remember, everyone is everyone on the priority placement list 
is a contracted teacher. Everybody on that list has a right to continued employment with the district. So that's why we don't include seniority on that list. Um, let's get, I'll come back to you so we can give someone else a turn. Yes. Okay, I have a two part question. You said we could turn down a whole assignment. I didn't say that, I said I was going to check. Okay. Yeah. And my other question the question was can we turn down a pool assignment? I need to go back and check with staff relations on that, what the ramifications would be, but that's one of the questions we've written down and we'll get the response back All to you. Right, the other part of my question was Rosa. Yesterday, uh, not yesterday, we were told that the District 6 fair was Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, so it's been canceled. So the District 6 job placement fair was to be... Oh, I'm sorry. I misspoke. I'm sorry. It was scheduled for tomorrow. Right, it's been, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. Okay. I'll, I'll it was scheduled for Wednesday. <laughs> it was scheduled for Wednesday. That's the one that's been canceled. Postponed. Sorry. Yes. Um, is there anything that you can or, or maybe not do that would cause you to not be employed next year? Whether it's forgetting to turn something in or, or turning something in or that anybody who's on the priority placement list, and Tim will verify that you are on that list, who is not selected by a school by, by mid-August, we will place you in a temporary pool assignment at a school location. It won't be like a substitute where you're at this school one day and that school another day. You'll be assigned to a school, and that's the school you will show up to every day. Your, your salary will not be affected. Teachers are now all on annualized salary, so you will get your July 5th paycheck, which covers June. You will get an August 5th paycheck. You will get a September 5th paycheck, whether you're working or not working. Excuse me. Yes. Will that pool assignment be in your credentialed area? Or we as a sub? Will, will the pool assignment be in your credential area or as a sub? There are a number of different ways we make pool assignments. First of all, toward the beginning of the school year, the first thing we do is we look for vacancies. So if a school has a vacancy in English, and I have a priority placement teacher who has a credential in English, we will temporarily assign that person to that vacancy. Um, otherwise, what we do is we look at schools that um, typically have a need for substitute teachers or they have somebody that's just about to go on some kind of a leave, be it a medical leave or maternity leave, and we will assign people there in their matching subject area so that someone's there slated to go in and fill in for that teacher on a temporary basis. <clears throat> Barring those two circumstances, we will assign people to schools the principals know that um, you know Tim is coming, knows Tim's, Tim's credential area, and then assigns Tim accordingly. Now, does that mean if you're a math teacher, they need you to sub in a particular period? That's a, that's a decision that's made on, a school, on the school site. Uh, I have two questions. So, let's go back there, and then we'll come back. Does. I've been a pool teacher for two months on my first year here, Not, I mean for LAUSD. I'm a math teacher for high school, but I was um, assigned to cover for two months as a PE teacher for middle school, which I have no experience about. So I have to deal, that's my assignment, I cannot do anything. So I was, you know, um, um, that's like terrible experience for me. Just, just so you know that it would happen to you, to, all, to all of us who will be as, who will be full teachers eventually. Thank you. Okay, my first question: If you sub, let's say you sub for a lady who found out she's a mom pregnant, and so she has nine months to go, 
uh, after a year, are you still, uh, and you lose that subside of which term uh, comes back. After a year, are you still guaranteed a job? Could you do the district a service by seven? If you're, good question, if you're assigned to a temporary location, Say I was going out on a six-month leave and you came in and you covered my classroom. When I, came, when I come back, we need to find you another position. So yes, you are still contracted, you are still employed. We would find you forever until, because your contract is ongoing. And my next question, I know that you start the year at this school, well, at a, a name. The question was, what about um, what about schools that have vacancies but don't fill them, and, and what are we going to do to encourage principals and schools to fill those positions? Again, the issue is we're working with the local district superintendents. Again, HR doesn't have line staff responsibility for supervising principals, so we have to work through the local district superintendents and their staffs to ensure that their principals and their staff selection committees are filling vacancies um, as quickly as possible. We, we all know we must meet NCLB requirements, we must meet Williams requirements as far as uh, not having vacant positions. And if, especially if it's a Kia school, that's a big issue as well. So again, we're working uh, closely with the LD superintendents to ensure that their principals are filling positions in a timely fashion.